Hello viewers, my name is Portia and thank you so much for joining me on The Conversation. Okay, now tell me. Hello viewers, thank you so much for joining me on The Conversation. My name is Portia Asari. On October 1st, we have a special, wonderful program. It's an album launch and coming up. And I cannot wait for you guys to meet our guest in the studio today, a set woman of God who's been in the ministry for so many years, ever since her young adult days. And today is such an honor and a pleasure to have her in the studio with me. And I have Minister Evelyn Bradford here. So welcome to the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm good, and you? I'm doing well. Looking Excellent. good. Thank you. Love you too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So let's talk a little bit more about Minister Evelyn. Like, who are you? Who is Minister Evelyn? Uh, Minister Evelyn is just like any ordinary person, I would say, uh, who loves the Lord. Um, have loved the Lord since I was a kid, uh, as far as I can remember. Uh, played significant roles in my church, in my local churches that I've been in. Uh, not too many, but uh, based on relocation of being, you know, where I grew up and then uh, here in the States as well. I um, have been a praise and worship leader in my local church uh, for over a decade, I would say. I'm a friend. I am um, um, a career person as well. And now looking into getting involved in, in ministry in its fullest. When someone says, no, Stanley, what comes to my mind? You need to come to mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, unique. Um, I'm a perfectionist, I would say, mm -hmm. um, but uh, committed as well. Anything I, I, I put my hands to do, I do it with all my heart mm -hmm. and um, I'm dedicated and loyal. I love the Lord again. Uh, I fear the Lord as well. I strive to do what is right by God and by my fellow human beings, I would say. Mm -hmm. That's good. I mean, that's the only way we can really love. Yes. Yeah. Live by God and by Respecting fellow. people. Absolutely. Uh, honoring people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The very basic principles and values we all live by. Okay. Yeah. Then, speaking of principles and values, I'm going to ask you this. I was going to actually ask you in the middle of the conversation, but let me ask you some of the most important core value for you. Or what it is if it's one right requirement. well um, commitment commitment mm -hmm. I would say anything you put your hands to do do it in its fullness and commitment just commit to it whatever it is okay as long as it's not evil intended or you know commitment we commit it yes be commitment. <laughs> if, if I don't take anything from this yes. conversation right now, because I think it's yes, yes, commitment yes. is the key. Okay, now back to your music and back to you being a worship uh, leader, you know, singing in the church. Share that journey a little bit. It's been an interesting one. <laughs> um, I grew up in the church, uh, as I said uh, earlier. I uh, learned so much. God has been good to me, placing good people in my life uh, from my parents and my guardian and, and uh, set men of God and women of God, friends and family, um, have all played a significant role in my life. Um, I loved singing uh, when I was in the youth choir. I joined the prison worship team and you know grew from there as, as just a prison worship member mm -hmm. becoming the prison worship leader and then took up that challenge in uh, being a leader and, and also learning from many other people that uh, have the opportunity to um, get to know that's it yeah. when did you realize that this was the ministry for you I mean, you said you've been doing this for quite a while, right. you know, right. as a youth, you were right. doing this in the house of God. When did you realize that this is your call and this is a ministry for you? I, 
I think as an, an adult, uh, when I moved on from a young adult to become a full adult, there was that uh, thing in there that I knew it was going to come to a point mm -hmm. where I needed to do this. But um, I also fought within myself. I wasn't sure if this is for me. Um, I wanted to do it on my own scale, you know, in, a, yeah. in my own local church and, you know, just, just, I, I wanted to give God what I felt I wanted to give. Uh, but I, God wanted more from me. And at some point I had to uh, realize that and accept it and uh, do what uh, I have to do. And that time is here. Yeah. Yeah. What was the actual, what was the challenges that you were facing? How did you overcome that <laughs> in order to get to this level? Because it's easier said, but you know. Fun, so. Well, it was not a jolly ride yeah. all the way. I wouldn't say that. Um, I think the most difficult part was to accept that calling mm -hmm. by itself. There was that inner struggle of stepping out and doing what God truly has called me to do. As I said earlier, I wanted to do it in my little, my own little way. Um, so just uh, accepting that call fully and saying, okay, God, I give it up. I, I am ready fully now for you to do what you've called me to do. Mm -hmm. That was the most uh, challenging part. But uh, when I got through that, of course, uh, there was uh, the physical part of it, which is combining uh, that with my job and every other thing mm -hmm. I needed to do. But uh, thank God uh, he got me through it. So. Yeah. It's great. It's great. <laughs> and now we're sitting here in the studio. Exactly. Right? Yes. It's all about commitment, one, and yes. two, let it all go. And yes, allow God to yes. Just... Allow God to do what he has asked you to do. I think that was the point that, uh, to me, I got the most peace yeah. in my life. Because I had struggled with the call for a long time. Wow. I wanted to do it in my own little way. Great. Right. So let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the album and your yes. music. Yes. All right. We'll, take, we'll be right back. We'll take a quick break. If you are just tuning in in the studio right here, we have Minister Evelyn Bradford. So welcome once again, and thank you for joining us in the conversation. Thank you. So let's talk about soon coming candle. I'm yes. so excited. I'm excited. Too. Yes. <laughs> and it's going to be on October first. October first, yes. six p.m. Six p.m. Yes. We don't want to miss that. No, but let's talk about soon coming candle. You better not miss that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so soon coming candle. Let's talk a little bit about that album itself. Let, walk us through the conception of this album. I think it's a journey. It's that whole journey that hopefully uh, people might get to know. But it, <clears throat> it's where God started to deal with me in many ways uh, regarding the call and the purpose of my life. Um, so, of course, uh, it was the struggle, uh, that inner struggle, accepting that call. And then uh, after accepting that, it, now the real work started. I said, Lord, you have to tell me what to do, what to say, what is the message you want me to carry? Because I just didn't want to sing. I just mm -hmm. didn't want to sing anything. You know, I could have written any, any song by my own uh, inspiration, but I didn't want to do that. So I sought the Lord, uh, of course, the Holy Spirit be my greatest companion in this process. Um, <clears throat> literally gave me all these songs, I have to say, uh, inspired me and showed me the way and what 
what to say and what, you know, to put across. What was this journey like for you? Oh, mine. <laughs> um, it was tough. It was tough. It was tough in the sense of not wanting to do this. <laughs> I want to talk about the journey of right. the album itself. Right. Yes, not yeah. wanting to yeah. do the album itself. Wow. Yes, because I thought I thought it was a lot of work. I thought it was the, the you know I have friends in in the ministry. I have you know acquaintances yeah. in 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 the music ministry and just the thought of having to step in there fully and yeah. doing this it was difficult for me definitely so. there's a difference in ministering in the church or right. to a congregation or to people and now ministering onto a pla a different platform right. where people were actually you know receive it from a different channel right so it's not a, I believe it's not an easy call in itself, you know, to have an album, to bring that to birth. Right. So. Uh, you are right. Uh, now it's not just going to be about uh, going from, you know, a local program to the other. Now uh, this is a vision uh, and a message that's going to be carried across to the world, I believe. And uh, my hope is that whatever message that God gave to me to give to the rest of the world will be uh, received well and uh, people come to the point where we can look at different ways of accepting the message. Um, the songs are quite different, I say. Uh, but but obviously they all carry their own messages mm -hmm. one way or the other in it. So it's my hope and belief that it would be accepted uh, the way that God gave to me. You know, more so I, I I pray that it would transform the lives of people, and it would inspire, and it would uh, bring hope to those who think you know what, uh, it's, I just can't do this anymore. But, uh, you know, I, I pray that they will pick this up and something would be in there for them uh, to touch their lives yeah. one way or the other, I guess. I'm sure, well, I listen to the album myself and I, I it is a contemporary music, however, I receive, a dif I receive a different vibe and aura from every single track that I listen to. And I, would, I want my viewers to listen to this specific track um, and I really enjoyed it. I think it is, Who Do You Say I Am? So, let's <laughs> listen to that one, right? Yeah. 
you did not just enjoy that. <laughs> that song itself, it's so much going on. It's amazing. It's incredible. Yes. It's n nothing like no other music that I've ever listened to. Like, it's nothing compared to the, like, the average, normal right. gospel music that we listen to. It literally placed me in this aura, like, in this... <laughs> Like at this concert, I felt like I was at a gospel yet rock concert, like a band, and I'm listening to this. And off off camera, we were actually talking about some of the instruments that I went about to, you know, with this music, the song itself. Um, let's talk a little bit more about yes. that and why you chose this genre, this <laughs> different, you know, sounds. Yes. sounds yeah. I, I'm particularly excited about that track i think it's different the sound is different um specifically mm -hmm. the acoustic guitars in there uh also made it very unique mm -hmm. um oftentimes they're not i think in our area of ministry mm -hmm. i don't think we utilize a lot of guitars as much as we probably should and that was what i was looking for i was looking for you know more you know string instruments uh, so you know that, yeah. that, that that was why we did a lot of the guitar that real life concert feel the whole yes. idea was to just you know bring something different yeah. a different sound yeah. you know that still carries the message do you believe that this music itself this song itself will will influence our generation oh absolutely yes yes i think it would speak to the older, the, the young, and you know, I, I have. They say that uh, when you start seeing kids dancing to your music, then, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, you know, it, yes. it's something that's like, well, yes. Okay. So I, I would want to believe that uh, it would speak to, you know, all different age groups, you know, the, the young and the old. And, in between. Yes. <laughs> and viewers, if you're if you listen to the music, please make sure you comment in the comment button. Share your thoughts with us about this specific song, just so we know that you enjoyed it. So your music, now with this album, Soon Coming King, it's I know it's going to be held um at the Apostolic Church sure. on 230 3rd Street. Before we get into that, I want to talk to you about what inspires you most when it comes to your music ministry, the inspiration. I think it's, it's the message. Um, it's, it's more so the message uh, that we put across. Um, one of the things that I was looking for in this world, I was believing God for, was to, to give me the specific message that he wants his people to get and not so much about the fluff, you know. So um, yes, the, the lyrics of a song it means a lot to me. Uh, on a general note, my inspiration uh, specifically has you know come from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Honestly, each one of these songs, I would say, I, I got them right from from the Holy Spirit. You know, he would just drop them uh, from from the exact words to the to you know the arrangements to you know to, to the core of everything that needed to be done. Yeah. So, Minister, let's talk about some of the gospel artists who have influenced your ministry. Oh my, they they a lot, uh, but uh, some of the people are um, Donnie McClickin. Yeah. Um, Yolanda Adams, uh, Cece Wynes, and of course my bosom friend, mentor, and brother, Minister Denny Nate, uh, who has gone to be with the Lord. Uh, he touched my life uh, through his music uh, and through our friendship. And there's also one particular person I can't leave out, uh, who truly was one of those, you know, you know there are people who sow that kind that particular seed in you. And this woman has has just blessed me uh, from my you know teenage years. She's called Rebecca Malopi uh, from South Africa and she really has inspired me really tremendously. Mm -hmm. I mean she she her music 
is just spirit filled and, and just so amazing. I love her. Yeah. I just she's great. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. And of course there are many more, but I, I can't go down the list. So yeah. we, <laughs> we don't have time for all exactly. that. Yes. Maybe on camera we can talk yeah, about exactly. that. Yes. Now what characters did you pick from these men and women of God that has placed something in you when it comes to your ministry like that you're really it's a value for you you know you selected a few of these characters and you have incorporated it with your own I think um, it, it's a sense of spirituality I picked mm -hmm. and purity in in their compositions um, of course you could feel the presence of God I mean I, I that's one thing I look for in listening to a song that you can feel the presence of okay. God. You, I, yeah, I, I can't reiterate that enough. Yeah. But it's just, you, you have to. Otherwise, it's just an ordinary song, you know. Yeah. So for me, a gospel music should carry some oil. It should carry some, you know, the level of, of, yeah. of, of the presence, yes. And speaking of gospel music, when I was listening to your song, um, the album title, Soon Come the King. The song itself obviously carries a message, and that is any other song. Every song literally carries a message for the listeners or believers. But what I got out of the song was not only giving me the message of who Christ is or who he is or what the, the man we are talking about or you're trying to share with us, but it was also giving me an the opportunity that I open in to to express my own self as to who this man is, to give him that definition from me. Because some of the lyrics from the word, um, the lyrics from the song, Soon Come and Kin, of how important he is, um, how important he is, um, the message itself, like, Soon Come and Kin, worshiping our kin, you were really worshiping him, kind of describing him, how mighty and gracious he is, but yet get acts of us, you know, allowing the listeners to reflect back and to look back within yourself as to who this man is, giving, listen, giving listeners that opportunity. Um, was that your intent or it was more of <clears throat> I, I think that's the note. whole idea that uh, nobody should push onto you what worship should be. Mm -hmm. um, but each and every one of us should get to a place where we have that uh, deep understanding and relationship with God so that he can give you an idea of who he is. Mm -hmm. So you worship God <clears throat> from a place that you know how and you know best regarding your understanding of God, you know. Anybody, the, the point is, anybody can tell you who God is, mm -hmm. and, and you can try to perceive it, but until you get to that point where you truly have experienced who he is, then your worship is just trying to follow somebody else's just, worship, yeah. right? So that's the point I wanted to, to get across, that, listen, <clears throat> we go to church every day, and especially for praise and worship leaders like myself, you know, we lead people into the presence of God. Uh, but for me, it, it is my hope that people would get to a point and a place in their lives or in their spiritual journey where they can see the true picture of who God is. And then at that point, you don't even need a praise and worship leader to tell you, raise your hands or, you know, say to him this way or that way. You can get to that place and you open your mouth or by your just actions, you, you still be giving praise and be worship. Yes. Well, thank you for that. That was very, very, very important. Like, really, a lot of worshipers need to know this. A lot of believers need to understand. Listening to music, it's not... It's really not just the words that you're listening to, but it's what you're taking out of those words. How are you interpreting it for That's your own right. self? Right. So once the music goes off, it resonates with you, and you are able to worship on your own. I, I yeah. think, uh, just to answer that, what, what you know, oftentimes we see is a lot of people are still lost. 
mm. in that whole worship experience. And, and that's my take, you know, that it's become like a normality where, you know, somebody's telling you, okay, do this or do that. But as you're saying, when that music stops, when that, you know, praise and worship section is over, or se session actually, is over, then what? Mm -hmm. Can you find in your own space and in your own inner self and give God the worship the way mm -hmm. you know how, you, the way you understand it to be, and not just, you know, and just to say, for this album, this is my worship yeah. that I'm hoping or incorporating everybody to, to, to get in. Yeah. But when that song starts, you should be able to find it in your own heart and place to be able to still offer your worship. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will be talking about the album launching itself. Yeah. Evelyn, I'm excited to announce to you the launch of my debut album, The Soon Coming King. Please join me October 1st at 6 p.m. at the Apostolic Church, located at 641 233rd Street in the Bronx. You can't afford to miss this one. There will be performances by other guest artists. Why not? It's free. See you there. Welcome back to the conversation. This was really interesting. Like she's enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. And I hope you're enjoying it right now. <laughs> Miss Ellen, thank you once again. Yeah, but let's talk about the album launching itself. I am so, 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 so excited about October first. Yes. yes. Where is it going to be held at? Oh, it's going to be at uh, the Apostolic Church uh, at six forty one two thirty third Street in the Bronx. Yes. And uh, this is what I'll say to you. Listen, guys. Now let's be real. You can't afford to miss this. It's free, why not? Don't stay home. Come out, let's share the message. It's a great album. Please come out, join me. Let's launch this awesome album and it will be a blessing to you. Yes, Minister, thank you so much. So it's at 6 p.m., correct? 6 p.m., 641 East 233rd Street. 6, 6 p.m., prompt. prompt. At your time, <laughs> at my time, is the album launch and time. <laughs> Soon come again, 6 p.m. And the address, once again, is 641 East 233rd Street. You do not want to miss this, as the minister said. Come and experience the move of God. Come and listen and come and enjoy, it. you know, being in the presence of God. You don't want to miss this. And I'm so sad that we have come to an end of this awesome, incredible interview with Minister Evelyn Bedford. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And we will see you next time on The Conversation. Please make sure you share, like, and comment. We'll see you next time. Hi there, my name is Evelyn. I'm excited to announce to you the launch of my debut album, The Soon Coming King. Please join me October 1st at 6 p.m. at the Apostolic Church, located at 641 233rd Street in the Bronx. You can't afford to miss this one. There will be performances by other guest artists. Why not? It's free. See you there.